Start. Hey, it's Lemon. Welcome to the Backlogs. Hope you're doing well. A few weeks ago, I played through Pikmin 2 with only purples. And to spice things up, I asked a fellow challenge runner, Press A, to do the same with any color of his choosing. And because it technically ended in a draw, we decided to duke it out mano y mano in Pikmin 2 battle mode. It, uh, it was a thing. Alright. Hey, yeah, suck on that. Oh, who? What the? Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. All right. You wanna play? You wanna play? <laughs> well, let's fucking go. I'll play. <laughs> oh, I can't. I can't whistle. I can't whistle. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, yeah. You don't know about that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have fun with that. Good luck. Okay. <laughs> That's really bad for me right now. Get this Pikmin on me. Ah! <laughs> Go away! It's still following me! <laughs> Stop! Holy shit! <laughs> look at that! Look at look at this! <laughs> Help! <laughs> There's like 20 Pikmin on you. <laughs> I know! Oh, I'm so screwed here. Okay, Steal yolo, it! Come yolo. on! Oh no! <laughs> no, no! Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> Run, children! <laughs> so yeah, that went well. If you want to see more of that nonsense, Press A will actually be releasing an edited video on his channel sometime in the near future. So look forward to that. In the meantime, I decided to make a poll to see which video you all wanted to see next, and after watching Terraria surprisingly sweep the vote, I began to do some research, letting the other two runs take a back seat. Because there's always time to do them later. What? Are you... Excuse me for a moment. Hello? Dan, what the hell? You're supposed to pretend to be my Pikmin rival. You know, like, for content? You're not supposed to be doing this for real. What are you doing? Well, I didn't want you to fail a third Pikmin run. I'm sorry, what? Lemon, it might be time to accept it. Pikmin might be too hard for you. Maybe you should just go back to the Souls games. Oh, <laughs> this fucking guy. All right, then. You want Rock Pikmin only? That's fine. You can have it. But you realize this means I have to one-up you now. And I think I know just the way. Today, we're going to find out. Can you beat Pikmin 3 without collecting a single fruit? So, for those unfamiliar with the game, let me explain. In Pikmin 3, we play as three individual explorers. Our home planet, Kopai, is starving, due to the fact that our people exist entirely on fruit juice. I don't know, man, I just read the lore. Naturally, after scanning the universe, Kopai discovers Earth, a planet rich with potential food, and sends our three explorers to investigate the planet and collect any fruit they can find. And just as naturally, our ship can't handle the atmosphere of Earth, and a disaster that we're all too familiar with at this point occurs. And so, our adventure begins. Hey little buddies, long time no see. And they're gone. Meet Charlie, the captain of our team. At this point, we don't know where the rest of the team is, so our first priority is to reunite and assess our current situation. The controls for Pikmin 3 are relatively similar to the last two games, with a few exceptions. We can still whistle to gather Pikmin, throw Pikmin with relative accuracy, and tell them all to get away from us with the shake of our nunchuck. However, the key difference in this game is twofold. For one, we can't adjust our camera. No more top-down views for accurate aiming. Instead, we can now lock onto enemies and objects, which I'll show off in a second. But first, we need to find the rest of our crew. I discover that the Pikmin crush maneuver is thankfully still a thing, and then we... Uh-oh. Well, he's dead, which means it's time to move on to our second crew member, Alf. Alf is the team engineer, and judging by appearances, the youngest member of the crew. He also discovers our official first Pikmin type, Reds. With some quick throwing, we can unlock the Red Onion, getting the tutorial officially underway. One of the several new mechanics in this game is item piles. Simply throw your Pikmin into a pile of objects, and they'll take them where they need to go. And once they've delivered their payload, they'll run back to the pile to get more, collecting every piece until the pile runs dry. And just like that, we now have a bridge. Now, one thing that's a bit annoying about this new mechanic is that the Pikmin will still run back to the pile even when there are no more pieces to grab. So you'll have to go back and recollect them or intercept them before they return to the pile. Sure hope that doesn't become an annoying problem later. Outside of that though, the usual mechanics for carrying objects back to the onion are all the same. What's completely new, however, is what replaced the top-down camera view, a fully interactable map. At any point in the game, if I poke my Wii U gamepad, the game will pause and I can look at the entire map, taking my time to devise a plan. Now granted, there's still fog of war, so if I haven't explored the entire map, I won't be able to see it all, but this new mechanic definitely makes it easier to multitask and plan ahead. The other new mechanic that I mentioned earlier is the lock-on feature. Not only does this make it a bit easier to aim my throws, but it also lets me give a charge command, 
which tells every Pikmin in my employ to rush headlong into whatever we're currently locked onto. Which not only makes it faster and easier to get a load of Pikmin to latch onto an object, but will also let me attack enemies all at once. Very useful. Oh yeah, there's one more new piece to the puzzle. These yellow files that are scattered around the map, which range from helpful tips about mechanics to tiny lore dumps. I make my way across the tutorial map, smashing down a sandcastle wall that I'm sure someone worked very hard on, and eventually rediscovered my ship. The good news is that everything looks like it still works. The bad news is that the rest of my crew is still missing. Oop, wait a minute. Looks like the third crewmate, Brittany, the crew's botanist, is actually okay. Well, sort of okay. I guess she's trapped somewhere without food or shelter. Knowing how rough this planet gets at night, that's not good. So, with Brittany stranded and Charlie lost, Alf plays the hero and immediately leaves the planet. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm sure everyone will be more than able to fend off the massive predators. It's fine! As per usual, the Pikmin Onion takes off with us. So we'll still have reds in the morning. And at this point, we're introduced to the new time limit system of the game. That's right. Gone are the days of taking our time in Pikmin 2. In Pikmin 3, you have a limited supply of food. A supply of food that can only be replenished by gathering fruit. You, uh, you probably see the problem there. Thankfully, we start the game with three days of free supplies. So we've got a little time to figure things out, but not much. First things first though, we need to find the rest of our crew. And it appears Brittany is stuck somewhere in this region of the planet, the Garden of Hope. Time to get to work. The Pikmin and I make a quick and easy landing, and with that done, the race is on. Now here's the thing. With us needing to make the most of every single day, and since I haven't thought about this game since it came out in 2013, we're gonna be doing a lot of resetting. I'll need to find out where all the ceramic pieces are, learn which enemies are important to kill for pathing and resource purposes, and how to get them quickly, and overall just learn the layout of the map so that I can rush from story objective to story objective. Because unlike the last games, while collecting fruit is important due to it giving you more days to play, it's not required to finish the story. There are several story beats in the campaign, and so long as you hit all of those, you can finish the game. And hey, would you look at that. It's Brittany, and she's... um... This is a kid's game, by the way. Whew, okay, false alarm, she was just sleeping. But she's still stuck inside that planter barrel, so we're gonna have to find a way to break her out. Hey look, one of those fruit things I keep being told to collect. Damn, that does look good. Well, nothing we can do about it, guess I'll just go this way. And would you look at that, it's a new Pikmin type. Well, what remains of it anyway? Looks like it's currently being devoured. But with a little help from us, we can free them from their eternally gooey prison and acquire a new Pikmin type, the Rock Pikmin. Rock Pikmin are basically this game's version of Purple Pikmin. They tend to bounce off of objects when you throw them at them, but they can't be crushed by enemies and do a lot of damage when thrown at enemy weak points. That said, red Pikmin are still a bit stronger, especially since they can latch onto enemies and continue doing damage, unlike rock Pikmin. So outside of using the rock Pikmin to smash crystal and glass barriers, we probably won't be using a whole lot of them in this run. We'll let Press A do that. But we will be using them to free Brittany, which means we now have access to using two crew members at the same time. Efficiency. Not only that, we can actually throw crew members like Pikmin, which in turn lets us access lots of areas we normally wouldn't be able to, like this lemon here. I mean, I know I'm not supposed to collect it, but I can't just leave a fellow lemon behind. There we are, I've helped it down from its perch. Now it can start a new life, and make a YouTube channel or whatever it is lemons do. I spent most of the day exploring, unlocking shortcuts around the map, and growing lots and lots of Pikmin. I'm not exactly being the most efficient I can be, but I am getting more comfortable with the controls. And after smashing down the glass wall that's right next to my base, a signal appears further off into the map. Looks like we've found the next story mode trigger. We also unlock a new ability that lets me use the map to tell my crew members where to go without having to control them. So for example, I can switch over to Alf, who's not doing anything at the moment, drag the map over to my base, then tell Alf to go there with whatever Pikmin he currently has in his squad. And away he goes, letting me switch back to Brittany to focus on other things while Alf gets into position. The game also gives you a heads up when the destination has been reached, so you don't have to constantly switch back and forth to check on your crew members. I swear, this game becomes more and more like an RTS with each iteration, and I am absolutely here for it. But with day two complete, Brittany and I rocket off into the atmosphere with our new Pikmin in tow. Interestingly enough, the onions don't stay separate anymore. They actually meld into one big onion. Freaky. Also worth noting, even though I now have two crew members, the amount of juice consumed each day remains the same. So that's one less thing to panic about. But don't worry, there's plenty of other stressors we need to address. Like the fact that we haven't found Charlie yet, that we only have a single ration of juice left, or that we don't have the cosmic drive key that we need to return home. It's fine, nobody panic, nobody panic! Alrighty, day three. We float on down with our super onion, murder a few frogs with rock pikmin, since they can't be crushed, and overall just do some more exploration, hoping to find the way to the next story trigger. 
After exploring most of the map, the only thing left is the area beyond this small river. I throw Brittany and some Pikmin across, then use them to rebuild the bridge so I can cross it with ease. And judging by this ominous cutscene that just played, it would appear that this is the right way to go. There's also a data file just lying on the ground here, which contains a journal entry from Captain Alomar. It's not exactly optimistic. God, I hope he's not dead. I spent so much time and effort making sure he made it through Pikmin 1 and 2. But with that little bit of lore in our pocket, I enter the rotting tree and find myself face to face with the first boss, the Armored Maudad. Not gonna lie, this boss looks a bit more intimidating than the ones we've fought in the series so far. The trick to this boss is simple enough. Break the chitin shell, then do damage to the soft, squishy bug underneath. The hard part is avoiding its attack. It rushes at you, and because you can no longer control your Pikmin as easily by moving them mid-march, it'll trap several Pikmin inside its mandibles, then slowly eat them one by one. If you do some damage to its shell, it'll let them go, but you have to be quick. I'm also starting to see some real problems with Pikmin 3's AI. For example, why are all the Pikmin I throw just standing around afterwards? This isn't just a problem with the rock Pikmin either, I've noticed this happen with the reds as well. It's really annoying that they don't just continue to attack, or rush back to my side like they used to in the old games. Also, because you're unable to control your swarm directly, now Pikmin just follow you like ants instead of just following the most direct route behind you. Which is great when you're navigating environmental hazards, but not so great when you're trying to avoid a boss. God, we're getting slaughtered out here! It cost me half of my rock Pikmin, but in the end I was able to kill the Maudad with a quarter of the day remaining. And for my troubles, it spits out a fruit that I can't take. And what is that? Is that an old Nokia? I mean, that makes sense. That would probably be the only phone that would still work. I do my best to get the phone back to base, and haul this absolute monstrosity back as well to hopefully gain back all of the Pikmin it ate. But unfortunately, we ran out of time on our way back home. That doesn't bode well. Ah, crap, we're out of food now too. Which means we only have one more day to push forward. Somehow, I don't think that's gonna be enough. I go back and collect the phone on day four, getting it back to the base with ease, at which point the ship confirms that this device can be used to extend our search, thus allowing us to hopefully find Captain Charlie's signal. But that's small comfort for the fact that we don't have enough time. It doesn't matter that we can collect both of our prizes from the day before, because we simply don't have enough supplies to push forward in the story. Thankfully though, with all this knowledge now in hand, we can go back in time and fix all of our mistakes. I roll the game back to day three, then skip all the exploration I did in favor of building the bridge to the boss room as quickly as possible. After which, I rush into the boss fight, use my rock pikmin to smash its tailpiece, then make a tactical retreat outside of the boss arena so I can swap out my rock pikmin for reds. Because like we said earlier, reds are better at doing damage, which means a faster boss fight overall. And after remembering that the charge attack is a thing, I sent my pikmin in for one last burst of damage and defeat the maudad before noon, bringing the phone and the maudad itself back to the ship shortly afterwards. I spend the rest of the day boosting up our numbers, then, with only one day of provisions left, we unlock the next area, the distant tundra. Who boy, sure is snowy out there today. Good thing I'm used to driving in inclement weather, otherwise this would be aw- You know, I'm starting to think Alf is trying to become captain by any means necessary. Subtle coup attempts aside, we're now in a second tutorial. A second tutorial that has us discovering our third Pikmin type, yellows. Looks like they retained their electric qualities from the last game. And because of that, we now have a new mechanic where we can make light sources in dark caves whenever there's a broken wire lying around. Yellows have two other properties as well. They can still be thrown higher than any other Pikmin type, and now they can dig faster than any other type as well. More on that later. For now, I build up my Pikmin forces until we have enough to push this weight, then escape through the hole we just made. Now we just have to find Alf and complete every single story trigger before we starve to death. Easy peasy. Oh look, there he is. Across a giant river that takes two bridges to cross. It's fine. Everything's fine. I set Brittany to work smashing a nearby electric fence, then have Alf explore his half of the map. We're getting to the point where the game is becoming one large bundle of puzzles, and it'll be more and more important to have every type of Pikmin in our squad to solve said puzzles quickly. Oh hey, the more on that later for digging is now. Turns out, unlike Pikmin 2, buried objects are never fully buried, so any Pikmin can get at them. Yellows just so happen to dig faster than other types. So now you know. I do my best to clear the map opening up shortcuts and finding as much of the bridge as I can, but in the end, I simply need more time. So, after a quick scan of the map for all the important things I need to remember, I restart the day. Hopefully I learn quickly, because every time I reset this day, Brittany has to escape the cave again, which only takes about three minutes, but that's an additional three minutes every time I reset that I'd rather not replay if I can help it. On the second attempt, I discover a portion of the map that I missed on my first run through, and find the remainder of the bridge pieces. Unfortunately, it's still not fast enough and I'm only left with the last quarter of the day to work with. Not exactly enough time to solve whatever the next story trigger is. In fact, I don't think we'll ever have enough time. 
There's simply too many things to do in one day. Unless... What if we had more juice before we reached this point? What if we went all the way back, right after the tutorial ended, and were able to speedrun days two and three into a single day? That might work. That just might work. What's more, for reasons I'm not entirely sure about, the map for today acts like I'm on day three instead of day two, which means all the fog of war I normally have to clear is gone. So I already have all the geographical information I need to speedrun the day. Now, don't get me wrong. It took a few tries to figure out the exact pathing I would need to make this work and trying to go as fast as possible led me to make some pretty stupid mistakes. But when I finally got it, I got it. I finish the bridge and grow up to 30 Pikmin as quickly as I can, free the Rock Pikmin and boost their numbers a bit around the quarter day mark, rescue Brittany shortly afterwards, cross the river and unlock the boss arena shortly after noon, and with roughly a quarter of the day left to go, defeat the Maudad. And although it was down to the last few seconds, I was able to get both the phone and the Maudad back to base. I wasn't able to actually pluck all the Pikmin it spawned, but hey, they're there if I need them in the future. And there you go. Two days consolidated into one, which means we've got one extra day in the distant tundra if we need it. Now, unfortunately, whatever made it so that I had the map unlocked in the Garden of Hope didn't happen for this area. So I'm gonna have to explore the map again if I want it fully available. I restart the day several times, sometimes because I'm just not happy with the time and sometimes because I'm just making sloppy mistakes. But eventually, I ended up with a day where I built both sides of the bridge and still had a little less than half of a day to spare. Which gives me just enough time to explore more of the map and find some what the hell is that? Huh. Okay. Well, throwing Pikmin at his body doesn't seem to do anything, and it keeps retreating into the water to get away from me as well. This is gonna take a bit longer than we have today. But with day three finally good enough for my satisfaction, we fly back into the atmosphere and add the yellow Pikmin to our onion. Welcome aboard, children of the firebomb. We missed you. Right then, day four. We either make our stand here, or the run is over. First thing I found was the scotch ball, which has what appears to be a whistle inside it. Turns out, this whistle gives you the ability to dodge. Dodging? In my Pikmin game? I mean, I guess that explains how the game expects you to avoid some of the boss attacks with the new Pikmin AI. Makes sense, I guess. After that, though, I went after my true target. Grapes. Now hold on a minute. Aren't grapes a fruit? And isn't this a fruitless run? Well, if you'll pardon the pun, yes. Yes, it is. Simply put, there's no way to beat Pikmin 3 with the three days it gives you before you run out of juice. Can't be done. But what if I told you that despite these 19 individual grapes I've shoved inside my ship, that we haven't actually collected any fruit? Confused? Well, what about this kiwi that was hidden inside a crystal? When my Pikmin haul off half of it, have we collected any fruit then? Go ahead and let that question marinate for a bit in your noggin. In the meantime, I'm gonna take out this shaggy long legs. Turns out, this fight is basically just Parl from Bloodborne. Just send your Pikmin up its legs, and though it will occasionally shake them off, if you're quick about it, you can stun lock it, breaking each leg in turn before it can recover and throw off all your Pikmin. And once you break all eight puffballs on its knobby knees, it loses all of its hair, which leaves its body open for attack. Unfortunately, the beastie outsmarted me and retreated into the water, so I had to waste some time waiting for it to come back out, but eventually I was able to get enough red Pikmin to swarm it, and it burst open, revealing two halves of a starfruit inside, which I immediately collected half of. Is that idea done marinating yet? It should be. Turns out, when you collect fruit pieces, the game registers how much juice it would get from each piece. For example, those 19 grapes we collected got us almost a full canister of juice, but not quite. Combine that with the half a kiwi we got, and it's enough to make one jar. Then combine the remainder of the kiwi half with the half of starfruit we got, and there you go. 1.9 jars of juice. Now, we can't drink that 0.9 until it becomes a full glass, but it still carries over to any future juice we collect, so it's not wasted. And now, the big question. Does collecting partial fruit count as fruit? Well, according to Pikmin 3, no. No, it does not. Victory is mine! So with a little extra juice in our guts, we have one more day to figure out how to progress. And wouldn't you know it, there's a weight here that could be rolled down this hill, opening up a new path. Safe to assume this is the way forward. I remove the enemies inside the cave, light it up by using the yellow Pikmin's conductive properties, and exit my way out into the next area. Oh hey, wait a minute. This looks familiar. This looks very familiar. Let me risk a little more light. Ugh! Oh god, turn it off! Turn it off! Well, that's definitely what ate the captain. Guess our next story mission is to get revenge. Ooh, and would you look at that? Once we're done beating up this beastie, there's a trove of grapes here as a reward. Speaking of beasties, it's time for the next boss. The Behemoth Fossbat. Half moth, half bat, all poison. The fight itself is simple enough. Run around the arena lighting up the little bulbs, and you can knock the Fosbat down, giving you an opportunity to dish out some damage. 
There's also these egg sack things around the arena, which spawn baby Fozbats, so you'll need to divert your attention occasionally so you don't get overwhelmed. But for the most part, that's about it. I also found a giant car battery in the back of the room, which is only accessible if you build a bridge in the arena, and I have a sneaking suspicion that might be an instant kill. So in the interest of having as much time as possible, I restart day 5 and try again, with much better results. Turns out, I was both right and wrong about the car battery. Fixing it results in the entire arena lighting up, and while it doesn't result in an instant kill, it does prevent the Fozbat from using its invisibility, which means it's only a matter of time. And after weighing it down with some yellow Pikmin, a rush attack with the remainder of my forces is all it takes, forcing the boss to panic and smash into the light bulb. Another boss down. It's a shame we couldn't save the captain in time. Oh, never mind. He's perfectly fine. I'm not quite sure how he's okay, considering he was sitting in stomach acid for five days, but who am I to question the strength of Kopai spacesuits? Anyway, a journal entry from Alamar indicates that he has our cosmic drive key, so finding him just became our new mission. After stealing 19 of these grapes, of course. Can't forget the grapes. I spend the rest of the day building up our Pikmin forces, but now is as good a time as any to talk about how the rest of this run is going to work. According to my research, we've emptied this entire map of every partial fruit piece, which means unless the story dictates it, we won't be coming back. In an attempt to be proactive, I did a little research to see exactly how many partial fruit pieces there are in each map, and the results are… not great. Remember, these numbers aren't representative of full juice canisters. The four partial fruits I can get in the tropical wilds might only equate to two days worth of supplies. With this in mind, we can't let up on our speed. Every day must be optimized, and every story mission must be done as quickly as possible. And with that in mind, it's time to return to the tropical wilds, where a new signal just appeared. The crew seems to think it's Alamar, but only time will tell. Just like the last area, we're going to take our time exploring the map, learning what puzzles are where and whether or not they're important. One such puzzle that I'm starting to see more of is these little dirt piles, which can house many different objects inside them, but usually tend to hide these little numbers. That's right, bomb rocks are back, and can be carried by any Pikmin type. And don't worry, Pikmin 3 does the Firebomb Academy proud. They're just as destructive as before, and they look better than ever. And after several resets and playing around with pathing, we finally found a way to reach the boss arena in the first quarter of the day. And would you look at that, the treasure's just sitting right there. Well that was easy. And it gets eaten by the Pikmin version of a Sarlacc pit. Because of course it does. This boss is actually a pretty cool way for Nintendo to show off their physics technology. The mere slug crawls around underneath the arena, and either begins sucking sand down into its mouth, creating the Sarlacc pit of death I mentioned earlier, or it'll do the exact opposite, bursting out of the sand and chucking rocks at your Pikmin. Do enough damage when it surfaces for air, and you'll knock it out of the sand entirely, giving you an opportunity to rush it and do extra damage. As the fight goes on, the Mere Slug uses stronger and stronger attacks, sucking in the entire arena, making pits that have steep walls that are much harder to escape, or just making extremely tall sand towers that are harder to climb, making it more difficult to attack. But after several minutes of fighting, my squadron of red Pikmin is able to beat it to a pulp, causing it to not only spit out the phone it was hiding, but an entire watermelon as well. Aw, look at that cute little totem pole. Needless to say, these watermelon bits are absolutely crucial to our survival, because guess what doesn't count as a fruit unless you collect every single piece? You know what? We've got time. Let's be greedy and take the mere slug with us. Ah, you know what? I think I miscounted my Pikmin. Here, let me just take a few off the slug and we can... Um, uh-oh. So yeah, guess what clogged the entire causeway and can't be moved unless you can get your Pikmin under it just right. And guess who doesn't have camera controls right now to make this work properly? You know what? It's fine. I wanted to beat the mere slug faster anyway. Okay, let's do this correctly this time. Grab all the watermelon pieces first, ignore the absolute tiniest piece, because it probably has the least amount of juice, then grab the phone to bring it back to the ship as well. The rest of the day is a free day, so I run around the map collecting all the enemies I can to build up my forces a bit, then end the day strong, juicing all the watermelons we collected. And with those pieces, we've now got three juice jars remaining. This is the most juice we've had since the beginning of the game. That's pretty exciting. And extremely sad. But with the flip phone acquired, we've unlocked the next area of the map, the Twilight River. On to day seven. You know the drill by now. Explore the area, find the pathing, and speed run the level when we're ready. There's more than just puzzles in this area though. Looks like we've got a new Pikmin type up ahead. And after half a day of puzzle solving and a complete lack of understanding about how spiderwebs work, we've got it. We free the pink onion and hatch the cutest little guy. Look at those feet. Oh, and those wings. I sense good times ahead. I spend some time exploring the map, learning which shortcuts are worth it and which are a waste of time, and also find a few more lore entries from Alamar, including one which may or may not be Alamar remembering how my Pikmin 1 challenge run originally ended. Good thing that Pikmin 2 video fixed the ending and made it all into a bad dream, right? 
right? Guys, terribly scarring life experiences aside, I found a bunch of grapes. Don't mind if I do. This is also a perfect example of why the winged Pikmin are so overpowered. Not only do they ignore water, because they can just fly over it, but they also take shortcuts, ignoring the usual pathing that Pikmin would take, and just going more or less straight to the onion or my ship with any goodies they have. This is a game changer. Return trips that might have taken a minute or two to complete originally will now take seconds. I think we just found our new favorite Pikmin type. The pink Pikmin can also lift things up into the air, which helps unlock whole new segments of the map. Oop, hold that thought, I'm getting a call. Louie, what are you doing here? Hey bud, can you come to my ship? I need something from Alama. I guess he's busy. Well, I guess we know what our next story mission is. It's time to go find Louie. Only one problem. The bridge is out, and it's gonna take some very quick movement if I'm gonna get all the pieces before the end of day and still have time to beat the inevitable boss at the end of it. This map also has several pieces of fruit still hidden away, which we'll need if we're gonna have any sort of buffer before we reach the end of the game. So add that to the list of things we need to do in a timely manner. To top it all off, the game must know how strong winged Pikmin are, because it puts several spiderwebs all over the map, making it so that winged Pikmin tend to fly into them when taking shortcuts. Luckily, I accidentally discovered that throwing a rock Pikmin at a spider is pretty much a one-hit KO, so we can use that info to speed things up in the future. There are three bridge piles we need to collect. The first is here, sitting on this stump. The second is just behind this swarm of aerial enemies, which are easily dispatched by my winged Pikmin. And the third is hidden underneath this clipboard here, which the winged Pikmin can easily move for- Nope, not the bridge, put it back, put it back! Which the winged Pikmin can easily move for us. Unless they all get caught in a spiderweb again. It took several resets, but eventually I figured out the fastest way to get around every obstacle. For spiderwebs, I just threw one of my crewmates into the web, which would bring the spiders into range of my rock Pikmin without risking the rest of my squadron. For the flying enemies, a quick charge attack from my winged Pikmin takes care of them as fast as possible. Meanwhile, the rest of my Pikmin on the map open up shortcuts, killing the other spider beforehand, and picking the correct clipboard on the first try, which speeds up this bridge pile here. And, rather than take the lily pad puzzle across a long and winding road to reach these pieces here, we can actually just use our Wiimote to click the pieces from the water, and our Pikmin will eventually fly high enough to collect them. And with the bridge fully constructed before noon, I make my way up to the top of the tree, where Louie has once again found himself surrounded by bugs. This guy, I swear. Time for the boss, the Scornet Maestro. This boss took some practice. Not only will the Scornet use its minions Ender's Game style to swipe a bunch of my Pikmin, it then adds insult to injury by showing off all the Pikmin it's about to kill. And no, whistling at your Pikmin won't save them. I'll be honest, I didn't really notice what was going on the first time I fought this boss, so it kinda devoured a good chunk of my forces right in front of me. But eventually, I figured out the rhythm. Wait for it to attack, swarm it with winged Pikmin, swarm it with heavy hitters once it's down on the ground struggling to get away. If and when it grabs a couple of your Pikmin, simply throw any Pikmin you have at the flaunting minions and they'll drop your troops. Easily done, so long as you don't panic. In phase two, it's just a matter of playing Space Invaders. Take out as many of its forces as you can and cut a hole to the back lines, and you'll have a much easier time dodging all of its oncoming attacks. I see you, Pikmin 3. I see you. The Scornet also starts using intimidation tactics, trying to confuse you into getting stuck inside its slowly closing ring, which I may have fallen for the first time, but not the second time. And after another rush of red Pikmin, it's over. The Scornet Maestro is defeated, and for our troubles, we receive a pair I can't use, and Louie, who is just so much more trouble than he's worth. Now, that fight took us to the last quarter of the day, and we definitely could have done it faster, but considering there's not much left to do today, I'm just gonna push for the end and trust that my Pikmin can make it home in time. And make it home they do. We get Louie back to the ship with half a minute to spare, and even manage to bring the boss back to the base as well. Back in the planet's atmosphere, Louie is in some sort of spacesuit-induced stasis, and won't be awake for a few hours. So there's nothing to do but wait. However, as always, Louie throws a wrench into my plans. Not only does he land us in the Garden of Hope without my permission, but he runs off into the wilderness. So now we have to go find him again. Huh, I didn't know Louie was a Firebomb Academy member. Not only has Louie run off, but he's also stolen all of our juice. Joke's on you, game. I only had one canister. I was gonna die from starvation anyway. Ah, uh, well, we should probably go after Louie. He did open up an entirely new section of the map, after all, so that's something. And good news, not only do we have an entirely new section to explore for partial fruits, but we've finally unlocked the last Pikmin type in the game, the Blue Pikmin. Blue hasn't changed much since the last two games. They can breathe and swim underwater, and that's pretty much it. A bit underwhelming after giving me Pikmin that can ignore water entirely. Anyway, you know the drill. Search the area for partial fruits, duke it out with baddies while discovering all the best paths to take, 
and figure out which puzzles and shortcuts are necessary for forward progression. Thankfully, I was able to find another bunch of grapes across a platform puzzle, and after killing a nearby crawdad, we were able to nab some starfruit as well. So we've got at least one more day before we starve to death, and after doing my best to push forward on as many shortcuts and puzzles as possible, we end the day, watching as the onion gains mass one more time. That is one very groovy onion. Out of food once again, we're in dire straits. If we can't find more fruit and Louie tomorrow, that's game over. Or, and this is a gamble, we could revisit the tropical wilds. Now that we have every Pikmin type, chances are we can collect all the fruits that we missed on our first go, which might give us two more days to work with instead of just one. And sure enough, there it is. Another grape cluster hiding past a small river, just what the captain ordered. Funnily enough, my map is showing me that there's a star fruit around here somewhere as well, but I haven't seen, oh, uh, found it. And last but not least, there's one more boss to defeat here as well, another shaggy long legs and something tells me it's guarding the last piece of fruit I haven't collected yet. I send my winged Pikmin to collect the star fruit, which is easy enough now that I've actually found the thing, then use a healthy combination of yellow and red Pikmin to kill the shaggy long legs before it can escape to another part of the map, collecting the piece of fruit it was hiding. Unfortunately, we weren't fast enough this attempt, so guess who gets to do it all over again? All right, here we go. Grapes before the quarter day point, star fruit shortly after, and shaggy long legs obliterated at just about noon. Combine that with my winged Pikmin taking as many shortcuts across the map as possible, and you've got all three fruits collected with time to spare, which gives us not two, but three canisters of juice, a welcome buffer. And with this new buffer, we go back to the Garden of Hope, doing our best to create the fastest pathing possible. And after many, many restarts, I'm finally able to build this stupid pot before noon, which in turn lets me throw my crew members across the divide and get to the part of the map where Louie is hiding. Weirdly, the blue bridge I'm supposed to build on this side is missing a few pieces that I can't seem to find, so I can't get more than one crew member over here. But this attempt is more of a scouting mission than anything else, so whatever. Better to go see what we're up against. Oh look, a giant crystal on a suspiciously shaped mound of earth. I'm sure this will go well. Yep, things are going well. Things are going very well. Here we go. The second to last boss of the game, the Quaggled Myroclops. I'm sure you're already seeing the problem here. Not only do we need to do damage to its legs, which is a bit tricky with the rock Pikmin I brought with me, but every step he takes actually creates a puddle. And the one time I did knock him down, I made the rookie mistake of thinking it was helpless and going full throttle. So yeah, that was a trap. And I lost my entire squadron because of it. Between losing literally every Pikmin I had and running dangerously low on time, something tells me this ain't the attempt. Let's restart the day, yeah? In fact, let's go ahead and increase our chances. Turns out you can actually bring a squadron of winged Pikmin over to this bucket bridge, run into the tunnel a bit, and with just the right angle, you can actually tell your winged Pikmin to collect the blue bridge parts, skipping the need to complete this pot entirely. Now granted, the winged Pikmin can't break down the crystal that's holding the second pile of pieces, but with some more clever angles, we can actually throw a crewmate over the bridge, along with some rock Pikmin. And once the bridge has two piles reattached, you can throw Pikmin to the other side with zero issue. All right, new plan for the Myroclops. Instead of just rock Pikmin, I brought a squadron of reds as well, which are much faster at disabling its feet. Combine that with an increased number of rock Pikmin, and you've got a quick push into phase two, where the crystal covering is removed and the squishy plant beneath is now exposed. With the crystal gone, there's no longer a need for my rock Pikmin. Just throw red Pikmin at the fruit while dodging the tongue and do as much damage as quickly as you can. Quick and simple. At least, I thought it would be. That tiny lake that it's making is really causing more deaths than necessary. And this rage mode attack it's doing not only squishes my Pikmin, but also creates even more water that any of the survivors drown in afterward. This, uh, this may be a problem. And eventually, after losing virtually all of my Pikmin and getting stunlocked into oblivion, I decide to re-strategize. A simple fix, really. Just swap out the reds with blues. And although they don't do as much damage as the reds do, at least we don't have to worry too much about them when the Myroclops rages across the arena. And after a hard fought battle against both the Myroclops and the clock, we've done it. Only one more boss to go. Oh, hey, we found Louie. And he's asleep again, naturally. We also found Louie and Almar's ship. Poor thing has seen better days. Now, I never did find those missing bridge pieces. I have a sneaking suspicion they were buried in the dirt mound I never bothered to dig through. But I actually planned ahead for this, because who needs bridge pieces when you've got winged Pikmin? And just like that, both Louie and the boss are easily brought back to the ship. Looks like getting Louie back gives me my juice back as well, so that's a welcome surprise. And the boss's nutrients are enough to replenish all the blues I lost during the fight. So yeah, good news all around. I mean, aside from the fact that we now have to deal with Louie. I guess that's the one negative to this whole thing. But with Louie captured and interrogated, we now have access to the final location of the game, the formidable oak. And with three days of, hey Louie, can you? Yeah, thanks. With three days of juice left, that should be more than enough time to clear the level and beat the game. What could go wrong? 
Pikmin 3. Pikmin 3 could go wrong. Here we are, the decaying oak tree that houses the final boss, and, if we're lucky, Alamar and our Cosmic Drive key. This is the final boss, so I decide it's best to take 20 of each Pikmin with me, then make my way up the tree. And lo and behold, look who's waiting for us up at the top. It's Alamar- what the fuck is that? Hey, uh, how's it going? Mind if I steal that guy from you right quick? Yeah, no, that's fine. This is it. The battle to end all battles. All of our training has led to this moment- oh, it's dead. Alright then. Well, come on, Alamar. Time to go home. Oh, great, the Pikmin are lost. Well, I guess we can't go back the way we came. Time for a new mechanic. Because the Pikmin aren't sure where to go, we have to make a path home for them. And because she's the cutest, the Pikmin will follow Brittany. So using her will essentially decide the path that Alamar takes through the tree. Only one teeny tiny problem. Remember how we killed the boss? Yeah, no, we just pissed it off. And it wants Alamar back. And so begins the hectic struggle to reach the bottom of the tree before the boss can reabsorb Alamar. The first room is easy enough, with just a few bulborbs and a sand wall in the way. There, see? Easy as pie. Now all we need to do is get our Pikmin back on Alamar and we can push forward. And he's gone. Damn, that thing can really move when it wants to. Thankfully, it doesn't have a whole lot of health, so it's easy enough to get Alamar back once we're able to corner it, but it's incredibly annoying to have to go all the way back the way we came once we've got him. And it wastes an entire chunks of the day. The second room is full of elemental enemies and swooping snitch bugs, which means all of your Pikmin are constantly being set on fire, drowned, electrocuted, and stolen from your squad while you try to run away from the boss. It's a bad time. Normally, I'd just bring a hundred red Pikmin and brute force my way through, but the boss has several tricks up its sleeves. If it feels like it can't run away, it'll actually change form, becoming one of several elements. Sometimes it's water, sometimes it's fire, you get the idea. Which means you can't just bring one type of Pikmin. If you aren't prepared for every element type, chances are you're gonna lose Alamar and even more time. Room 3 is the worst of them all. Not only is it a dark maze, but it's filled with puzzles and puddles. Which means you've gotta grope around in the dark looking for light sources, take the long way around swaths of the map while the boss just chases you across the water with ease, and try to find the bridge pieces hidden around the map while outmaneuvering the boss. Which seems like it's getting faster and smarter all the time. In the end, I had to admit to myself that this simply wasn't a fight I was going to be able to win in a single day. It takes too long to solve all the puzzles, and even if I were able to escape the tree by the end of the day, we'd still have an entire boss fight to get through. So, though it pains me to do so, we're gonna have to take two days on this boss fight instead of just one. Thank god we have several canisters of juice remaining. On day 14, we return to the top of the oak to find that Alamar is back where he started. And I guess we're not the only ones who've been trying to free him from this cycle. Alamar himself has been trying for days to escape, only to keep getting brought back to the top of the tree over and over again. Damn Nintendo, slow down, Lovecraft isn't rated E for everyone. But with Alamar in tow, it begins again. The boss begins its chase, and we begin our long sprint to the end of the dungeon. Thankfully, I unlocked a few shortcuts for myself yesterday, so I can get between rooms somewhat quickly. And despite the boss stealing Alamar once or twice, and doing its best to keep him while changing into several elemental forms, I was finally able to escape the dungeon with Alamar in tow. There's just one problem. We've still got an entire boss fight to do, and boy howdy is that thing mad. On top of that, I'm quite literally out of time. I don't think I could have done those puzzles much quicker than that, so we're just gonna have to accept the time loss and push forward. Day 14 has come and gone and we're down to a single canister of juice left. But there's still hope. All the puzzles are solved, and Alamar is almost free. One final push. Let's do that. Damn it, Alf, you stole my line. And would you look at that? Apparently, by getting to the bottom of the tree, the boss no longer spawns at the top. Thank God, my little legs. They're so tired. One final push. The boss has a strange health bar, made of the same material as its skin, and Alf makes the observation that every time it spills its goo all over the place, the boss itself gets a bit smaller. Which means if we can destroy the goo it's dropped before it can reabsorb it, we've effectively removed a chunk of its health bar. Unfortunately, this is easier said than done, since the boss not only attacks extremely quickly, but can also still summon all of its elemental attacks. And while they're easy enough to get rid of, the terrible Pikmin AI is really starting to stab us in the back. Why are you just standing there? We're in the middle of a battle! The fight pushes on, with the boss gaining the power of flight and becoming even harder to hit, and eventually summoning all of its elemental attacks at once. This is not going well. But the boss has made one crucial mistake. One simple fact that guarantees my victory. I brought reinforcements. Reinforcements who hit hard and ask questions later, and look damn good doing it. And so, after two days of sprinting through mazes and half a day of fighting, it's finally over. The Plasm Wraith is defeated, and with one final burst of light, Captain Olimar is finally free from the Eldritch Horror. And good news! Olimar is okay. Okay enough, anyhow. And he also has our Cosmic Drive Key, which means we can finally escape the planet and return home which is exactly what we do. 
back into the stars, where our bountiful amount of fruit we collected will save our- Oh. Oh, right. Uh, well, we've done it. We've beaten Pikmin 3 without technically collecting a single piece of fruit, and doomed an entire planet to starvation. Success! I guess. Oh god, what have I done? Well, there you have it. Pikmin 3 beaten without any fruit. More or less. I am curious how much better we could have done this run, considering I missed one or two fruits, and my speedrunning techniques leave a lot to be desired. So, if anyone wants to give this run a try to see if they can beat it faster and more effectively, feel free. Go on. Do it. You won't. But as for me, that's all I've got. Take care of yourselves, be good to one another, and I'll see you all again soon.